Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it, and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we discuss a watch that is big, bold, and gold, but not overwrought. Less is more with the Jacques Hedreau Austral Grandeur, that is Grandeur and Grandeur, both in one 43mm red gold case with a 24-hour Grandeur hand. One circuit of the dial per calendar day, 24 hours, a single gorgeous extended alpha hand, and a lovely case that manages to be broad without being thick. So the timepiece is only 12 millimeters thick. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it actually sits lower than a Rolex Daytona, so it's very flat. Given its size of 43 millimeters in diameter, the lug-to-lug -lug span is pretty reasonable at 51.4 millimeters with a broad spacing between the lugs of 22 millimeters. It's a watch that certainly has vintage overtones, but is very very much of our moment and of our era. The size as well as the lug spacing assures that. The lugs are nicely tapered and short cropped. They don't expand too far beyond the case. They have a nice separate sculptural beauty to them and their particular concave profile with the sharp cleft between case band and lug face is a fetching combination, but the timepiece has a substantial strap to match substantial lugs. While the lugs are tightly curved, there's nothing done to mute the impact or the volume of this strap. It is big, luxurious, maybe even a little bit excessive, bolstered, medium rectangular scale alligator leather, semi-gloss with a little bit of a distressed leather treatment. You can see it's actually a bonded strap. This is something Jacques Hedreau does, and it's something you typically only see on extra thin watches. But here, the bonding creates a seamless structure that feels absolutely slick and smooth on the wrist and in the hand. The buckle is a Jacques Hedreau red gold piece designed to match, and you can see that it features a little bit of an elevated bridge between the prongs, so that when this one is buckled on the wrist, it sits flat with the strap between the prongs rather than stacking up below the bridge. It's a clever design, and a simple one. The timepiece with a handsome case band that we saw before. You saw the concave profile of the mirrored lugs, their slight teardrop, their short, tight curve, but I didn't talk too much about the case band itself, which has a little bit of a bowl shape. It actually has tremendous tumble home from the bezel down to the case back, so it actually appears thinner than it is, and it's pretty thin when it's on the wrist. Turn it all the way around, you can see the one strong horizontal on the case is formed by the joint between the bezel and the mid-case. The crown is extended, and you can see it has a little bit of a sleeved tunnel for the stem tube assembly, the crown featuring the double star logo of the Jacques Hedreau brand. It's an easy crown to use because it almost looks as though it's a conventional push-down crown that's been pulled out into the setting position. Rest assured, this is how it looks full-time. Now, the timepiece does have a wonderful Grand Faux enamel black dial. Yes, black enamel, something that even Patek Philippe doesn't guarantee when you buy a grand complication. Black enamel is difficult to execute. I've had Patek Philippe 5074s and 5016 Grand Complications in the studio, and they featured matte or lacquer dials. This is the real thing. Black Grand Faux, incredibly difficult to execute because black hides nothing. It shows every ripple, orange peel, flaws, cracks, crevices, every undulation visible on black enamel, and thus to execute it requires the highest standard, not just of skill, but of quality control, and that's what you have here. Simplicity itself, red gold alpha hand at the center, pinched where it abuts the, I suppose we could call it the cannon pin, there's really nothing else driving the hands here, and you'll note the 24 hour scale. It's a pleasure to adjust this watch forward or backwards because of the way it's geared down, the hand moves smoothly but relatively slowly. It's a wonderful, luxurious feel, almost like turning the wheel five times in a vintage Rolls Royce with that ultra low geared ratio. This is the slow watch for those who have a budget to match. The timepiece, not about getting anywhere in a hurry, is a lovely composition front and back and composed primarily of a 22 karat gold white gold winding mass on the back, 22 karat, not 21, not 18 karat, certainly not tungsten. The movement is a Frédéric Piguet, and it's known as the 11534, and you can see that it's nicely executed. It does feature a handsome mirrored anglage on the edge of every bridge. It also features a 
spectacular rose lathe guilloche pattern on the winding mass itself with a rayon sunburst and richly textured coat de Genève perfectly aligned across the bridges. Twin mainspring barrels, 68 hour power reserve with very even torque release from max wind to minimum wind. This one has its genetic roots in the old Piguet 1150. You can also see that the watch is adjusted in five positions like a chronometer, 28 joules. The timepiece does not feature stop seconds, but it does feature a broad array of gorgeous finish, a longer than average power reserve, and also the smooth torque release of the twin barrel structure so that adjusted in five positions with double barrels, this one is a very accurate timekeeper from maximum wind to minimum wind. 30 meters water resistant, it's not an aquatic watch, but it is a handsome timepiece that proves the old Mies van der Rohe adage, less is more. See it and make it yours on the watch box.